few seconds. You might see it before me. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to another show from BetfairTradingCommunity.com. And we've got a special guest today. The illustrious, the amazing Adam Williams. How are you, Adam? You all right? I'm good. Yeah, it's a very big build-up followed by a swift letdown. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. A, it shouldn't be a letdown. Well, I know what you guys are thinking. How did we? You know, how did we get Adam on board? How did we pull off this major coup? Um, <laughs> but joking aside, seriously, obviously Adam hasn't done a ton of things like this with us in the past. So I think it's great to have Adam on board today. Um, and actually, we can get a bit of an insight into how he trades, which is uh, using automation. And it is actually fascinating. So look forward to that part of the show. Ryan's not with us today. Um, he's at Centre Parks. So, you know, hopefully him and his family are having fun. I don't know what, Adam, what do people do at Centre Parks? Because I've never been. Um, spend loads of money, in my experience. So you basically <laughs> pay for your accommodation and you think, wow, I spent a lot of money there. Surely I'll get lots of activities and stuff thrown in. But you get absolutely nothing. You're basically just paying for a little space. And then every time you walk outside that space, you spend more money. Oh, it's, it's pretty good. It's good. It's nice surroundings. But yeah, it, it, it is expensive. Uh, any any of these things. This is, a, this is why I don't really go on holiday. Because like I feel like when you go on holiday... Everywhere you go, as soon as you, like you say, you leave your accommodation, or to be honest, even in your accommodation, someone is trying to rip you off or get money off you, you know, because they know you're a tourist. They know that, all that stuff. And oh, it just winds me up. Anyway, um, we better crack on with the show. Uh, good to see quite a few of you watching already. Um, we've got the icebreaker question today. Obviously, Ryan not here to deliver it. So we've just come up with one. And we've put it on the screen. So actually, if you can see it, I'll read it out in a second. But if you can see it and you're in the live chat, why not actually answer the question yourself and give us your answer? Um, but the icebreaker question is this. What's the best piece of advice you have ever been given? OK, now, I know this is a little bit kind of broad, a very broad question. Um, so it doesn't really have to be related to trading if you don't want it to. It could be related to anything. But yeah, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I'll hand it over to you, Adam. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Um, I'm going to go with, I can't really word this in terms of this is something someone said to me, but it's something that I learned that kind of flipped how I thought about things. And it's very relevant to trading, which is that mistakes are good. So when you, let's say you're learning to trade um everyone makes cock-ups everyone loses money um it takes a long long time to kind of master it and people beat themselves up um when they have these little losses or even bigger losses along the way but the key the key thing is that you actually in especially in the early sort of days of learning anything you want to actually aim for mistakes really there's a bit of neuroscience here it's all to do with your dopamine system so all about the pleasure and pain and reward and motivation your brain, you learn by making mistakes. So you make a mistake, 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 mistake. And then that one time that you get it right, your brain goes, brilliant, reward, and it gives you this kind of rush of dopamine. And, and that's what kind of spurs you on to, uh, and trains your brain to kind of do it the right way going forward. So if you're making mistakes and um, having what you consider as failures when you're learning to trade, then basically you're on the right track. Try and get more. And then over time, you'll make fewer and fewer and you'll get better and better at whatever you're doing. It doesn't just apply to trading, obviously. If you're learning a musical instrument or trying to, you know, refine some fine motor control sport or something, then it's the same with anything. That's, that's How about you? I really like that. Um, now, just touch on that at first. I really like that response, Adam. Have you ever read the book, uh, Is It The Obstacle Is The Way? I think it's Ryan Holiday or think that's his name I think that, so. you'll like that because that is basically talks about that principle of how actually the obstacle and the obstacles you face in life are what are going to propel you to actually developing as a person and having success in the long run and i think because uh, i think i think it's difficult because we live in a world in a society where we're told any mistake we make is terrible and we always have to like walk around fearing making mistakes when the reality is everyone will make mistakes in their life. Everyone will make thousands of mistakes in the total of their life in lots of different ways. And uh, yes, yeah, so I think that's actually a really good one, Adam. I love that. Um, we'll get to some of yours. Actually, should we have a look at some 
to ask yours before I go to my answer here. Um, Stuart asked, did anybody win big on Saudi? Um, I didn't see that one coming, I'll be honest. Um, but I would, then again, I wouldn't have backed Argentina at 1.13. I think they were at the start of the match. Mm. Um, Malcolm says no. Stuart says, best piece of advice, don't chase by gambling. That is a really good bit of advice. Never chase losses. Um, and I actually think that's probably the biggest undoing of traders that there is. I think that most traders that fall by the waste side when asked them what the problem was oh I, I ended up overstaking or i put too much on this or i lost some money so i put all my bank on the next one you know things like horrific stories like that um have you thought about joining btc i don't know if that's directed at you adam have you thought about joining <laughs> btc adam um i'm still on the fence i'm, I'm waiting for black friday <laughs> <laughs> stick to your strategy and move on from a loss that's a good one um i'm just getting through these. we've actually got quite a few guys thanks for the responses by the way it's great to have you i love how interactive this show is um best so advice Lott ever is a, sorry Tracy Lott is a really good one um yeah it's, it's human nature people people cut their wins short and let their losses run and it, you need to find a way of kind of flipping it around in your head it's it's hard to do though yeah yeah 100 percent. malcolm says here best advice i was given was from Ryan. Was it? Look, I thought he said for a second there a kiss from Ryan. <laughs> but uh, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, and that, it's amazing how complex people try and make trading, um, and they get kind of flustered and stuck in their development because they're trying to make everything so complex. And the simplest strategies, funny enough, are the ones that seem to do well. Um, Michael Rowan. You don't need to know all the answers. It's often enough to know who to ask or where to find out. And that's the thing, isn't it? That that's that's kind of why we built BetfairTradingCommunity.com and the community there is to have that hub where we can actually ask questions about trading and get answers from people in the know. And it's not always me, Adam and Ryan, who are the people in the know. There's lots of other people who are helpful on there. And I ask questions. You know, sometimes I love to ask like, how do you find trading uh, on a 3 p.m. on a Saturday? Because that's something I've never quite managed to master on the football. Um, so it's great to actually have a place where even the pro traders can get solid advice. Um, I probably should pre proofread some of these before I put them up, but what the hell? Uh, Stephen King, is, is what you your actions do sustainable? Is that advice or a question to us? Um Give, can you give a bit more clarity on that and I'll answer it? I think maybe what he's saying is that you have to ask yourself if what is, is the this kind of path you're following right now actually viable long term kind of thing. That's how I interpreted it. But let us know if it's different. Yeah. This is why we've got Adam on for the cerebral thinking. <laughs> what you might not know about Adam, because we have a weekly meeting, me, Ryan, Adam. We always talk about what we're reading and stuff like this. And every week, Adam will have read a few books and they're often about the brain and psychology and things like that. So we really will get some good insight today. Um, Either that or organised crime generally. <laughs> yeah. See, this is see this this proves the chasing losses thing. P. Singh, this is great. Thanks for your honesty here. I was doing very well, then lost most of my money by a bad trade. You know, you can't... See, if you're using proper bankroll management, it's impossible to lose most of your money by a bad trade. You know, one trade should never be that anywhere near that significant uh, to your trading. Um, if you haven't already read the guide I wrote on bankroll management, just Google it. Just Google Betfair Trading Community Bankroll Management. Or I think it's called Bankroll and Bet Staking, the article. Well worth a read. I've actually got a strategy in there that you basically can't lose your bankroll using that strategy. Um and also Jeez. think about what you learned by that bad trade. Like if you yeah. if you learn something that's going to improve your trading, then as long as you're not completely exactly. skinned and blowing your bank, then you you're up at the end of it. Yeah, and you know if you have obviously lost most of your money, then just use what you can afford to lose and try and build back up again if if trading is what you want to do. But you have to make sure that you're staking correctly. That's kind of the first step of that. Um, and until you do, until you can, you know, don't use money. Um, and one of the best, just to carry on with that for a second, one of the best things about Betfair trading is that you can't lose more than you actually have. 
like you, you know if you're trading day trading the stock market or forex or whatever then you, you can actually lose more money than you, you even have and also the 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 fees and the commission you pay on betfair are you're only going to pay commission on market level if you're up at the end of the market so in other words you can a scratch trade is a, is a winning trade if, if you haven't lost money at the end of a market then you're you know you, that's a winning trade whereas again with stock market trading or forex or whatever you're going to be paying fees on every single trade you make so yeah. it's it's impossible really to kind of break even uh, in a way whereas on betfair you know you can get in and out at the same price and, and kind of um scratch the trade yeah i always think like with these stock market investments when i get charged fees i'm like what is it you're actually doing for me? You know, uh, because at the end of the day, it's not them telling me what to trade on. Um, I still have to do all that stuff myself. Um, Jonathan Batten said, best advice I've been given, a strategy will always be more profitable than your opinion. And I agree with that 100%. Um, the amount of people that just trade on their opinion without any kind of backing or research to their thoughts that's that's what makes most people lose at gambling and that's just the truth because every gambler out there everyone who trades everyone who bets can use their opinion right and most will you we've all met people who like a bet and you say well why do you bet and they're like oh well you know i don't know i just fancied it today or just have a good feeling i just have a good feeling about it i mean what does that even mean it's crazy mm -hmm. but it's amazing how many people trade like that and every market is just a collection of different people's opinions. So if you want to beat that market and rise above that, then like you say, you have to have a strategy. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, is two to four percent stake still the opt optimum stake you would advise? I mean, this depends very much on what type of trading you're doing. I can't answer this because let's say you're doing, I don't know, pre-race scalping on horses. If you're not taking it in play, you could probably use, you know, up to 20% stake if you wanted to. I probably wouldn't advise going that high, but you could use maybe 5 to 10% because you know you're getting out of that trade. So the most you're ever going to lose, even if it swings wildly, is, you know, you would think it's going to be, you know, maybe 1, 2, 3%. Um, but obviously, if you're just doing like a lot of what I do, set and forget betting, 2 to 4%, it's okay, but... You know, let's say you're using four percent, you've only got what 20, 25 bets essentially. If you have a bad few bad downswings, you'll lose your bankroll pretty quickly. So, um, you know, if I was just letting if I was placing a bet, for example, and just letting it run, I'd probably want to be using around one percent or less. Um, personally, um, what do you think on this one, Adam? Yeah, I think the key the key thing there that the percent is is really the risk. So if you if you're trading and you're going to be backing and then laying later, then it, it's it's not necessarily that initial back that you're placing two to four percent on. It's the kind of the most you could stand to lose the biggest percentage of your bank that you could stand to lose on one trade. Um, I would keep I would keep it down to about two percent um, personally, yeah. and, and, and just if you once your bank gets bigger as well, um, you know if you've got tens of, i wouldn't recommend keeping tens of thousands in your betfair account anyway but if you are then obviously don't if four two to four percent represents you know thousands don't go throwing that much into the market either because you'll then on a lot of these markets you'll actually influence the market so it works yeah. you know at the, at the lower and the upper end yeah exactly so yeah it's a good question though it's good to think about okay so i'm going to go on to my the best bit of advice i was ever given um because we've got quite a lot of comments here and that's good but uh get a bit sidetracked basically for me the best advice i ever got given i'm going to relate this to trading was this don't be afraid to go against the market okay and the reason this is such good advice is that loads of people don't follow what is in front of them or don't see the obvious because they just think oh well yeah it looks like that might happen but it can't happen because look at the odds look at the market the market's saying it won't happen so it won't happen i'm going to use an example from yesterday to illustrate this because i know that might not be very clear argentina saudi arabia right argentina well i think 1.13 at kickoff so 
everyone thought Argentina were going to win this and win it comfortably. Um, but if you watch, if you actually watch the game, Argentina went 1 0 up with a very questionable penalty decision. Um, but anyway, they went 1 0 up and they were trading around 1.02, 1.03. But if you watch the game, Saudi Arabia, towards the end of the first half, started really coming into it. And at the start of the second half, obviously, they did get into it and then equalised. Now, in a situation like that, some people messaged and even said, like on the forum, oh, you could see that, you know, Saudi Arabia were coming good. They were playing well. But you can almost guarantee that lots of people saw that but didn't take action, even though... They would have made a small fortune if they had, because when you look at odds, and especially when you look at odds before you've thought about your own opinion on something, it can actually influence your opinion. So what ends up happening is you go, well, yeah, Saudi Arabia look like they're doing all right, but they can't, they can't equalize. I've just seen the odds. Argentina are way too strong, you know. So. I always think don't be afraid to take the market on. If you want to really get good at bet fair trading and really become a good trader, don't be afraid to take it on. Just look at the cricket thread. The guys on there are making so much money and all they're doing is laying at short odds time and time again and making a profit because actually they take the market on. When the market thinks an event's over, see, the thing is when Argentina 1.02, the market is basically telling you this match is over, but it's only 1-0. And at the end of the day, that's a pretty precarious position to be in if you're betting at 50 to 1 on. You're risking 50 pounds to win one pound. The market's basically telling you it's over. All you need is an equaliser and you make massive profit. And actually, that went on to lose. So whoever backed to 1.02 would have lost a lot of money to try and gain virtually nothing yesterday. Um, so, yeah, that's my answer on that one. Um I'm going to do, we're going to do a little bit of a weekly trading review now. There's not going to be a particularly long section this one. I'm going to, I'll start off, then I'll hand over to you, Adam. Um, mine's going to be kind of focused on the World Cup. And I'm going to talk about Monday's games where England played Iran, um, USA played Wales, and Netherlands played Senegal. And you like this, Adam, because you won't know this, but I did, I did a live video basically giving some tips and advice on what I thought would happen. And all, all the three outcomes that I suggested didn't happen, right? Yeah. But this is the beauty of trading. All three of those, and I said about trading these selections as well, all three of those selections prices came way, basically went our way. So I had England winning 2-0. Well, when England went 1-0 up, or even when they went 2-0 up, you could trade out for a profit easily, or at least remove your liability. And I've actually advised that on the forum. And then we had Netherlands-Senegal, where I said Netherlands were too short. Netherlands ended up winning, but they didn't score till the 84th minute. So again, another really easy opportunity to make money trading. Um, and then the third one was USA, draw no bet against Wales. And they took the lead. So again, you could have taken a big profit there, back the draw, which I suggested to do on the forum at the time. And then Wales equalised. So it's interesting because... All three of those selections were really bad selections in the end, but they weren't selections for letting it run. This is the beauty of trading. This is why I love Betfair trading, that you can actually, you know, you can back both options in the market and make money. It's all about timing and it's all about basically looking for value in the right spots. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my review. Adam, do you want to talk a little bit about your trading? Because because people probably don't know what it is you do is it, on trading, is it? <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, it's tricky really because all of mine is automated. Um, I don't I use my own software. Um, so w way back in sort of two thousand and nine, I I started messing around with um, with Betfair, and I, at the time I didn't even understand how odds worked. Really, I had no idea how betting and odds worked. Um, also couldn't program at the time and, and trying to write a bot for Betfair was basically what I used to teach me both Betfair and programming. Um, and that, that's, that's been doing well for, for quite a while now. Um, the software basically places tons of trades every day. The, the specific thing I wanted to talk about um, was um, racing, horse racing in the UAE. So United Arab Emirates. 
This is probably something that a lot of traders who are currently trading the UK and Irish markets um, are, are not looking at. Um, and it might be something that you want to have a look at to kind of supplement what you're already doing because the markets over there behave in a similar sort of way to how they do in the UK. So racing only runs between, I think, October and about March, and it culminates in the, I forget what it's called, is that like the Gold Cup or something um, in the UAE, which is a huge race. There's a lot of money traded on these races. There's two main um, venues, which is Maidan and Jebel Ali. Um, Maidan's a bit more sort of liquid and stable. Um, Jebel Ali's a bit more... Um, so it's slightly more erratic, but still has a lot of money traded on it. You can sort of, you can get going from about half an hour before the, the race starts ish. So it's kind of better than the, the U S and certainly the Australian races for me, because there's a bit more, got a bit more time to, to do what you want to do there and, and plenty of liquidity in the, um, the races as well. Um, probably average about eight to 10 runners um, on, on those markets, which is, a good sort of size it's not like crazy numbers of runners like in some of the irish markets and it's not not too few either um i've been running my software on those markets for a while um primarily i run mine on the uk races and i just found that basically i could just kind of plug it into the the uae markets and it, it just kind of worked in the same kind of way so if you're currently trading the um gb and irish um markets um have a look at the, the uae ones as well oh that was the other thing i was going to mention um they, they kind of get going a bit earlier than the, um, the UK races as well. So you'll be able to get started at about 10 a.m., I think, something like that. Right. So if you want to trade a bit earlier um, in the day and sort of pick up the UK races when they start sort of 12, 1 o'clock at this time of year, um, actually they're a bit earlier now, aren't they? I saw Lingfield was about half starting about half 11. But anyway, you'll be able to get started a bit earlier if you're more of an early bird and... Um, yeah, hopefully supplement some of the trading income with some different markets. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's such a good thing to look at. We'll have to get that in the software, won't we, Adam, eventually? Yeah, I do want to, yeah, definitely, along with the US <laughs> and the Oz ones. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, so what is it in, in, What is it you look for when you're, when you're automating? Is What is it the automation is firing and trying to find? Um, just value, basically. So if I can um, sort of... Uh, get a better price than so I look at the whole market I often trade multiple runners in one race um, and just look at the way the the prices move over time and try and basically get lots and lots of value bets and then kind of hedge up just before the um, before the race starts I find that the, the busiest sort of times are it's not so much now, actually, because um, since Betfair upgraded their API, uh, there's, there's a lot of bots now on Betfair absolutely hammering their API 24-7. It used to work more in sort of sort of two peak time periods per day, um, which would be kind of six till 11 in the morning when a lot of people are starting to bet on the, the day's races. And then you'd have another kind of peak time in the, the sort of early evening, which is a mixture of finishing off betting on to the tonight's races and starting to bet on the next um day's races so that's when the markets are kind of forming and prices are moving around quite a bit and um yeah it's i, I don't it's it's completely mathematical um it take <laughs> it's probably a bit out of scope of um getting too in depth in this call but i don't actually look too much at um fundamental stuff like um you know the going and the race types and things like that um i do pay attention to which courses um, I'm betting on and, and market liquidity and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, just, just places lot, play places more trades than, you know, you could humanly sit there and do using trading software. Um, and then at the end, I either, I, I always um, hedge up for a, a level profit or loss. So I'm not, I'm not really letting it run. Um, I, I did once for the, on the Grand National when I kind of accidentally traded the Grand National um anti-post market and ended up with like a uh a, quite a big exposure um unintentionally and that was, that was basically gambling um which i don't like doing so yeah i, I always kind of hedge up before the market starts for a, a profit or loss certainly don't win every single market no one does but you know over the time the the graph sort of snakes upwards 
Yeah. So when you when you talk about value betting, are you kind of looking at when you're looking at the graph or whatever the price moves? Are you trying to kind of find when the horse is at its highest, and then looking right, this horse has gone higher now, and then I expect it to come back in again because that's the pattern kind of thing. Yeah, and also the way that horse different horses play off against each other as well. So you'll get within each kind of banding of, of prices you'll you'll get when one goes up the other goes down and the they'll it's hard to do on, on the camera but you know you, you end up with this kind of you mean, yeah. pattern like that so if, if if you're quick enough which obviously a, a computer is, is pretty quick to spot these price movements if you start if you see one going up then you, you may already know that the other one's gonna gonna go down um things like that and, and also things like um uh, actually, actually, having said that, I don't look at the fundamentals I, like race type. I do do sort of do different things with um, sort of maiden races with less liquidity compared to um, you know the, the really big races like the, the like Cheltenham and things like that. So it behaves a lot more like a kind of scalping bot on the money on the races where there's tons and tons of money in and the prices are very stable compared to a maiden where often the favourite will will kind of either come in heavily or or it will drift heavily um and I, to to spot whether something's going to drift or not um I'm trying to think what i um a couple of things that i could mention so one thing it does is it looks for um big bets coming into the market um so you can now and again when you're watching the market um and you'll see this if, if you use trading software like bet angel or, or geeks toy or whatever else you might want to use with, with lab you know trading software with ladders um, now and again, you'll just see a ton of money hit the market for one horse, and then the market goes, "Oh, what's going on? Uh, that, that's going to win." So they they all jump on it and follow it. And you, you need to sort of be able to spot whether that's genuine money or if it's just someone trying to push the price down. If it's genuine, a big bet will come in and it'll go right at the front of the um, of the queue of money because it wants to get taken. So it's not too concerned about getting a tick here or there. Uh, worse off it just wants to get that bet match so it'll come in yeah. right at the top if it's fake money then you'll see it pop in a couple of ticks behind and then they'll it'll, they'll be cancelling it and popping it back in and trying to move the the prices down so it's, it's all stuff like that what watching the way horses play off against each other um watching for weight of money on each side um big bets fake bets um i, I use some kind of uh indicators which are, are more sort of more used in, in forex like moving averages and um some st sort of stability metrics to j just basically get a, a gauge of the whole market and how stable any horse's price is and which way it's likely to move wow yeah, that's probably, I mean, that's probably that's what that, before i put everyone to sleep no that's really good i find it fascinating i mean what i find most fascinating is that you've created your own automation you know, you don't actually use one of the automation bots, do you? No, yeah. I, it, when I got started, I made the kind of framework. Um, so it will, it's every half hour or so, it checks for new markets, loads them up, starts a thread for each market in the software. And then any strategy that I build on top of that just kind of plugs into into those threads. So it's, it's been like 10, 11 years since I changed the actual framework of it. Wow. And now again, now and again, I'll come up with a new idea for strategy. And then I can just write that one extra bit and, and sort of plug it in and test it quite easily. Um, and the other good thing about using software is that you can, you can very easily log all your trades. And it, it, this is something that people often don't do because it's just a, a ball eight to kind of record all their trades, but it's something that everyone should be doing because then you've got the evidence of whether something's working or not. And obviously, if you're doing that automated, then it, it, it makes it much, much easier and less work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've only just started looking into automation uh, myself. I keep, it's one of those things where I'm like, I really know I need to get into it. I imagine there's quite a few traders sitting there thinking that right now. Um, but I did actually use some the other day on Fairbot, and I placed, I placed it in the correct school market looking for late goals. Dan... A guy called Dan on our forum, amazing member, actually built the bot for us um, and looks for goals basically after 74 minutes, backs another goal. All I needed it to do was back another goal, essentially. Um, and, you know, it does everything I want it to. Um, and, you know, 
I think the thing with using bots that most people like is that it takes emotion out of it. You know, Adam, you're not sitting there getting emotional every day about your trading, are you? No, the, the, this, that was a key thing for me because um, I was quite hot headed when I tried to learn um, trading. And, you know, I, every time I made a, a cock up, I'd really get annoyed. Like I was saying earlier, every time I made a mistake, I had the wrong mentality about mistakes. And every time I made one, I would, I would get riled up. And that then affects your subsequent trades as well. And, yeah, if you can program a bot, a computer's not sat there going, oh, I messed up there. It's, it just does what it's supposed to do. But the flip side of that is you have to learn to think very logically because you have to predict what that software is going to do in any given situation and not kind of run away with you and, and lose your entire trading bank. So that, that's the sort of yeah. other side of it. But yeah, it's it's it does take the emotion out of it. You're absolutely right. And I think for people who don't, obviously have that kind of knowledge like myself um it's really good on the community on betfairtradingcommunity.com that we have people that can build bots you know we've had on different things as well i mean we've had fairbot we've got bet angel bet angel and someone on bet fairbot is it called bet fairbot or just bf bot now I don't bf know bot it manager i think it is yeah yeah um so essentially the great thing is that even someone like myself who has zero knowledge can have a bot built and then I can actually plug that into the market. And the reason people are willing to help is it's just the way the community is. People are full on there, but also you get back, don't you? If you give out, you get back. And uh, obviously we can help people and I can help people in other ways. And that's a way that they can help me back. Um, so it's quite nice, actually. Um, the solution 777 says here, just signed up for the horses this morning. Good on you. Great decision. Take it from the training videos. Hallelujah, Adam. Someone is watching the training videos. <laughs> he's well and truly had enough of me already today. <laughs> <laughs> so you will know Adam well. Solution 777, unlike most other people, because most people don't seem to watch the training videos and then ask us a question that is literally answered in the first line of the first video. But, um, yeah, is there any value in creating a bot for the racing? Well, and if so, how would you do it? Well, the answer to this is, you know, what's your expertise? I mean, if you're a software developer, maybe look into it. If you're not, just just get Fairbot. I mean, it's cheap. Um, try it out. And then if you don't like that one, try out Bet Angel or BFBot. I think they all have trials. I'm not sure about BFBot, but I'm pretty sure Bet Angel and uh i know fairbot do or at least cheaper trials i don't know if they're free trials um, yeah they, they do a similar bet angel do a similar thing to us where you can buy like a couple of days membership or even maybe even one day you, you don't have to be a programmer to create a bot i i because i can do that i, I tend to just kind of plug it into my software but i do use bet angel as well like if i just want to watch the markets as a as a human does and see what's going on in, on the whole ladder for ideas, or, or if I want to tweak my own software, then I'll, I'll use that because it's it's better than watching, you know, some console screen with a load of numbers flying around on it. So if you're not a programmer, then yeah, do um, have a look at um, have, have a look on the forum as well. Um, it, there's tons of discussion on there at the moment about yeah. different automations and people creating bots and and also people um, showing each other how to take the selections that come from our software and plug them into uh, the bots so that you've got, you know, the end to end full solution there. Yeah. And, and I think it's amazing that people are doing that. Um, and you can create, I mean, the easiest way to create a bot, if you don't know what you're doing, someone like me is to use one of those, like you say, bet angel, bet fair bot or fair bot, and then actually just watch the tutorial videos and learn how to create a bot using those bot things and that's what people are essentially doing that most of the people who do it on the forum you know they're not programmers who they didn't develop that software but they're learning how to do it as well um so it's really quite interesting we seem to have quite a few software developers and people into software on the forum as well which is a, a really good news for us um so yeah i mean i wouldn't personally recommend trying to create a bot if you don't know what you're doing um, but if you've got a decent level of programming, I mean, Adam, it, you, of course, are, were self-taught, weren't you, in terms of programming? Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, yeah, I, I, was, I was in IT already, um, so I've, I've always been a, a bit of a techie. But, yeah, like programming-wise, it, 
writing stuff for Betfair was literally what taught me, you know, full on hardcore programming. And then obviously down the line, I, I joined BTC and, and saw the value in sort of sharing some of the stuff that I created for, for the benefit of other people as well. So yeah, it's if, if you want to learn how to do it, I'd say in terms of, it probably took me about, um, I literally just sat down and went, right, I want to know how to do this on Betfair. And then I learned how to code that. So there's probably massive gaps even now in my programming knowledge, but it probably took me about six months to learn how to program. And then another six months to come up with an actual strategy that worked on Betfair. So yeah, you're talking sort of a year all in all. It's just a, it's a function of how much, how much time you have, how much knowledge you already have and how much you want it. But as a shortcut, if you don't want to learn how to program, it's just not your thing, then yeah, just use something like Bet Angel or BF Bot Manager or whatever. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think it's uh, Adam's a good example of someone who just you know sets themselves up to get the best results. You know, everything you do, you know, you read, you're always reading. I think it's audio books you listen to a lot of the time, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. You're on the what is it? The keto diet. You know, yeah, the yeah I've eaten low carb for a while. I lost about three stone and just have twice wow. as much energy as I ever used to, thanks to that. And um, yeah, I like the audio books because, um, well, I listen on double speed for starters. So I, technically, I can read twice as much stuff. And then I can also listen to it in the gym. But I wouldn't recommend listening to audio books while you work because it's sort of the same part of your brain trying to do two different things. But you could do physical stuff while listening to a book. And, you know, you effectively, you're getting you know, three times as much out of your time if you listen on double speed and you do something else at the same time. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, I need to start doing more of that stuff myself. Um, Dan S says, good to see your face, Adam. I was starting to wonder if you really existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always say I'm a bit like, um, who's that character in the IT crowd, Richmond? You know, the guy that doesn't even pop up until about season two and then he just comes out of the server room and they're like, you could have been there the whole time. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it reminds me of that when I was younger, my mum used to work for a company, basically like an IT company that did computer graphics. And a lot of those guys down there are a bit like that, but they're hilarious guys. Um, but no, I mean, the thing with Adam is, obviously, he doesn't do a lot of the video stuff, so you don't see him on those. But um, he's always about on the forum and things like that. And uh, yeah, if you might not know, actually, I just thought you might not know if you're watching this, because if you if you aren't a member, I always assume everyone's a member. I don't know why. But if you're not a member, you might not know who Adam is. Adam is actually our software developer. So all the great software we have on BetfairTradingCommunity.com, you know, the horse racing software, the being able to create your own strategies, save them, get your selections every day, save on the football and on the horse racing, having the back testing. That's all thanks to Adam. Um, so we've got a lot to be very grateful for Adam for doing things that me and Ryan could have only dreamt of when we uh, when we first were having discussions about <laughs> what to do with Betfair Trading Community in the early days. Um but yeah, we always had the vision of creating the software and Adam was just the perfect partner to bring on board to do that. Because obviously you had, have the background in um, Betfair as well. You know, you're a Betfair trader, trading on Betfair, having success. Um, and that was great to us. I think we're pretty much, you know, we've done all we wanted to here. We've, we can pretty much wrap up now. Um, thanks everyone for your comments. It's a really interactive show today, actually. Um, it's quite, a, quite hard getting through all the questions and things, but it was good. So it's good to have the interaction. Thanks for being a special guest today, Adam. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. So uh, we've got a, what a nice comment here from, I'm, just, I'm only going to say your, your surname here, Benotas. I, I don't know how to pronounce, how do you pronounce your first name? You can tell me in the chat. I won't, it won't necessarily be on the live video because uh, we're going to shut off in a sec, but yeah, <laughs> tell me and then I'll know for next time. Um Another great show, live show, guys. Cheers. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Seems like everyone's enjoying them and, and they've been a great success. So we'll carry on with them. Unfortunately, I think Ryan will be back next week. Um, but if you don't want Ryan, let us know and we can gradually, you know, we can tell him, we can ring him up in centre parks and just say, <laughs> sorry, Ryan, you've been phased out of the company, right. you know, and we'll, uh, I don't know, we'll give him a couple of packets of crisps as a kind of compensation and then, you know, we'll, we'll wash our hands of him. Um, Stephen right. King says we should wash our hands of him, ironically. Um, <laughs> more hair than me, but it's ginger, so 
Yeah, it's got more hair than Adam, but uh, I know he'd win a fight. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> and they both go to the gym, so Ryan's got no excuse. Oh, wait, we've got one more question maybe from Dan here quickly. Can I ask Adam, is there a way for the daily selections to be automatically fed into Betfair Bot? Yeah, that, that would be good, actually. Um, it'd be good for us to have a little, like develop a little API between us. Um, as a stopgap, you can... If you export your selections from the software, you pretty much just have to rename like two columns, I think, and then you can import them straight into um, BF Bot Manager. You, you could probably automate it with something like Zapier. Um, Zapier and Integromat and similar things are probably a subject for a, a whole um, show in their own right, but that, that could be a way that you could sort of pull the selections for into a spreadsheet and then push that spreadsheet into um bf bot manager so the short answer is at the moment there's no um like you know active sync between the two um there's a couple of workarounds but it is something that we we want to we want to do in future yeah and we're always working on the back end to kind of make those things possible but as ever with any of this software it takes a hell of a long time um, all right, guys, hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks again to Adam for being a guest, and we'll see you all again next week. Cheers, guys. <laughs>